So your speedo in your car is actually lying to you. I'm doing exactly 70 miles an hour in my amazing Golf, and the GPS on my phone and in this RaceLogic performance box, so an accurate GPS device, say completely different things. This one there, five miles an hour out. So is my speedo actually lying to me? Well, we're gonna do some research to find out what's going on. Now, I'm not normally one for conspiracies, but there is no way that my car is just accidentally off with its reading. VW, you can't just be making up the numbers on the speedo of my car, could they? <laughs> but still, what's going on here? Why do speedos in cars overread by so much. So first I had a look into how a car actually monitors speed and then relays that to the driver. In theory, it's very simple to work out. It's the distance traveled divided by the time it takes. So how does a car make that calculation? Up until the 1980s, a lot of cars used something called an eddy current speedometer. This utilized a flexible cable that would run from the drive shaft all the way to the speedo. That cable worked a little like a drive shaft. So if one end spins, so does the other. And then this rotates a magnet in the back of the speedo, which then relays relays that information to the driver via a dial and a pointer. This method was pretty accurate at the time, but it would become unreliable if the cable were to stretch or even break, leaving you with no reading at all. And so unsurprisingly, new cars take a much more modern approach. Most cars since the 80s will use a wheel speed sensor, sometimes known as an ABS sensor. They're positioned in the hub to monitor the wheel rotation and also send some information to the ABS and stability control systems. That's how they work. At the end of the sensor, there is a magnet wrapped in a coil. This will then read the speed from the rotation of the ring inside the hub. And so the introduction of more and more electronic systems inside cars means that more components than just the speedo need to know how fast the wheel is spinning. That's why if you're doing a burnout or the car is on a dyno, your speedo will keep working despite the car not actually moving. This is a much more reliable way of monitoring speed, but there are a number of factors that can cause inaccuracy. So is that what we're looking at here? Because the sensor is only monitoring the rotation of the wheel, any change to the circumference would have an effect on accuracy. For example, if you fitted different diameter wheels, the rotating speed would then be different. The car's ECU wouldn't be calibrated for that size and it'll give you an incorrect reading. So that's why you often have a winter tires section in the menus on your dash. And the same goes for tires. They flex and deform depending on the road surface and the load you're carrying, which also means that the rotation isn't always the same. Tires also wear over time and they can be inflated incorrectly, both of which lead to a change in rotational speed and a difference in that speedo's reading. So all of these factors factors contribute to what your car is telling you. So if your car has four different size tires, all with different levels of wear, and you've got different size wheels, your speedometer is probably going to be out. It's also likely to drive like an absolute pig. So if your speedo is overreading, that could answer a long lasting question I've had while driving through average speed checks. Here in the UK, we have a lot of average speed checks, which are a series of cameras over a long stretch of road that can detect if you've been speeding between them. So you know how people speed up, then slow down for the speed camera and speed up again. They solve that problem. So this is a 50 mile an hour average speed check. And if we go right up to 50 on there, there you go, 50 miles an hour. I'm actually doing 55 in cruise control in my car. <laughs> I found out that in some places there are regulations that govern what a speedo could read. In the EU, it stated that a speedo must not underread, but can actually overread by a maximum of 10% plus 6.25 miles an hour. It turns out that the UK is exactly the same. You could be doing an indicated 50 mile an hour, but your real speed is much closer to 40. And then there's another factor that adds on to this. It's probably the same in a lot of countries, but in the UK, speed cameras can sometimes have a tolerance themselves, usually around 10% plus two or three miles an hour. You do still have to be careful though, I will say that. It's still entirely possible that your speedo could be super accurate and at a speed camera, you could have little to no tolerance, leaving you with a speeding ticket whilst doing the speed limit. So it's probably worth playing it safe. That does finally explain why so many people are flying past me in average speed checks. These people must be calculating the exact speed they can travel with this big tolerance stack of their speedometer plus the speed cameras. And that sounds like a headache to me. We did look into what the regulations are in the USA, but the only information we could find is that the speedometer has to be accurate within 5% either way, usually plus or minus 2.5 miles an hour. So it could actually be under reading, but that was from Fox News. So take that with a grain of salt. So we all know that the most accurate measurement of your speed is having your mum in the passenger seat, where even the speed limit is too fast. But how else can you measure speed so precisely? The answer is obviously GPS. And this is exactly how your phone does it. And even the monitor we showed earlier. A GPS system uses satellites and a receiver to pinpoint a location that it can use to calculate speed. Your phone's GPS is probably accurate to within a few meters 
numbers, so there is a level of inaccuracy there. It will also likely only refresh every second or so, whereas a more accurate GPS system will be much quicker and it will be accurate to with centimeters rather than meters. As you can see from our test, the phone and the V-Box showed the same speed, but the latter is able to update that speed much more frequently. This is why you'll see loads of wiring and machinery hooked up to top speed record runs. And if you're trying for a world record, the reading needs to be as accurate as possible because the difference of a few mile an hour would result in a questionable claim. The British car magazine Auto Express actually tested 10 regular road cars to see how accurate their speeders were compared to a GPS reading. And the results were quite interesting because they were all within the regulated tolerance, but some cars like the Mazda MX-5 were reading almost spot on when compared to GPS speed, whilst many others were over reading by three or five miles an hour, sometimes even more. So yes, your speedo is very likely to be lying to you. Mine certainly was. However, I don't think that's a bad thing considering that it's far better to overread than it is to underread. How annoying would it be if you were doing the speed limit but still ended up getting a speeding ticket? Knowing that speedometers and cameras have a tolerance does feel like a bit of a cheat code, but it's definitely better to play it safe to prevent getting an unwanted fine. Proceed with caution. It'd be really interesting to know how accurate all of your cars are. So check your speedometer against Google Maps or Waze and let us know the results down in the comments section, as well as the car. I'd like to know which cars overread and underread. That'd be cool. If you like this video, then you should definitely check out this other video on color changing cars. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.